It has been almost 24 hours now, and we're going to go for the reveal here and see what it looks like. Oh, it looks good. All right. When you're done, and it's not done, it needs 72 hours, but it is hard now, and I can touch it. And it's, it's like a sheet of glass on top of that map. So I don't know how good it looks on camera, but it looks really good here. And it is beautifully smooth. And let me pick up this camera here and we'll move it around and see if you can get the reflection. And going down right at an angle. It really, to me, looks really, really good. When you do these and it's an epoxy and you're coloring it, it's easier to do because of that colorant. You won't see any imperfections. But when you're doing something clear, you can see any little hair that might be in there. Let me put you guys back up here. 24 hours. It's got a nice glass finish to it. Has to be at least an eighth inch thick. I'm going to wait the full 72 hours before I flip this over and try to remove any drips from the edges. And that's the next thing that you're going to see in the video. Two quick things before I forget. I took the white butcher paper off of here and I'm going to prepare this to put the epoxy on these two pieces. When you're doing this, be sure that you tape this down. I had to tape it along the edges to try to keep it as flat as possible because remember, these have to be flat and level. And the other thing is, don't just use paper. I use that butcher paper and it works okay. But the epoxy, as you can see right here, did soak through it. And I had to pull that paper off. So it would be a problem if you just use paper. Make sure that you use cardboard and some paper would be a good idea. I couldn't just use the cardboard because this cardboard has got some little holes in it. Um, so it's, it's important to make sure if your furniture is in good shape and you don't want any harm to come to it, make sure you use cardboard and paper. It's been three days and our epoxy is sealed on all of these pieces. And we got a nice glass-like finish. But, of course, on the back, we still have that piece of wood that we super glued on there. And I did already get it off of this one because it kind of came off as I pulled it off the cardboard. You can see here that the epoxy actually flowed onto the wood on that sheet of cardboard and I had to actually pry it off that cardboard. So now we're going to remove these pieces of wood from the back, which shouldn't be too difficult. This one's a little loose already. And that came right off. This one here. That one's off. So that's the reason we don't finish the back until we're done with the front. Remember I told you to put that tape around the edges here and the reason for that is we can pick up this tape now 
and right along the edge the epoxy will be really thin but right here where the drips are it's going to be very thick so we should be able to pull this tape over and just bend where the epoxy is and hopefully just be able to peel that off well that worked really well let's take a close-up you can see that heavy drip right there but because the epoxy is so thin I can just peel it off and I'm going to do that all the way around. It will pick this right up right here, right on the edge. On this corner it's a little thick, so I'm going to cut it with the utility knife. And then we will sand this before we finish the bottom. So I'm going to keep going, go all along the edge here, and get that blue tape right off the edge. Eee. And if you just bend it over, it's nice and thin, and it comes right off. We'll have to sand this down, apply a little bit of stain to blacken it again right along this edge. But this is the bottom. Probably nobody will see it except for myself, and that's why we got to do it right and blacken that up, because it'll bother me. Oh, that edge came out really nice. Peeled right off. It was nice and thin on the edge. You can, if you, that's why if you saw, I ran the spatula around the edge because we wanted to get it really thin along that edge so it'll pull off nice like that. You could run the spatula there or if you got your glove on your hand, you could just run your finger around here to get that edge nice and thin so it'll peel off just like that. Yeah, that, that was really good. We got the tape and the drips off this side. This will have to be cleaned, sanded, a little more of that black stain for touch-up, and then we're going to seal it with polyurethane on this side. Some of you might wonder, why don't we just put on another coat of epoxy on both sides? Well, the main reason for that if you could hold this, you'd understand that epoxy adds a lot of weight. And there's no reason to do that to the side we're not even going to see. But we do need to seal it because we don't want moisture getting in here. If moisture gets in here, it may tend to warp. This is held down by some pretty strong magnets on the top. But in the hot, humid environment, when that van is just sitting in a parking lot somewhere for a few days, it might warp. We've got these cleaned up and ready to polyurethane, but first we need to put these steel washers in the locations that match the magnets 
on the table. So on the table, I put screw heads in and I mark the location for each one of these steel washers. And I painted the washers black on one side. So they're going to go right there and right there and on the rest of them also. I'm going to use this Gorilla Max Strength Construction Adhesive. It goes on and dries crystal clear. And then when we're done with that, we'll let it cure and dry for a day. And then we'll put the polyurethane on. So that's what you're about to see, the placement of these steel washers. We're almost done. We have the steel washers epoxied in place and now we're going to clean this up and put a coat of polyurethane on. So that's what you're about to see. And this is the completed map table. Under this little section, we've got storage for our silverware. Under the large section, we have our plates. Actually, more plates than we actually need. And our spatulas and tongs and other miscellaneous stuff. The depth of this is about two inches. And it's just right to store the things we need. It's held in by these magnets, so when we're ready to have dinner, we just put this back, and you'll hear the magnets click, and put this back, and we have our dinner, and we can talk about where we've been and where we're going. So this is a completed table. I hope this video gave you some good ideas. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully you'll watch my next video. Thank you for watching.